H D Kumaraswamy losing that trust vote in the Karnataka Assembly as was widely expected. And the end of the day, there were 99 votes that were cast in his favour and 105 against that trust vote. It was a long drawn out political drama. In fact, this coalition, which came to power 14 months ago with much fanfare, was an instable one right from the beginning. But now we saw since the beginning of this month a very long drawn out political drama playing out. 15 rebel MLAs of the Congress and the Division JDS Bella broke away. They've been sitting in Mumbai in a hotel in a resort and you have two other independents who've also been in hiding, basically bringing Mr. Kumaraswamy's government into a minority. So the stage now set for the BJP's BS Yadurapa to take over. Just a few minutes ago, uh, Mr. Kumaraswamy submitted his resignation to the governor who has asked him to continue as caretaker chief minister until an alternate government is in place. Let's listen to what Mr. Yadurapa has said to reporters just a little while earlier. It is the victory of the democracy. People were fed up with the Kumar Swami government. I want to assure the people of Karnataka, new era of development. Well, Maya Sharma joining us live uh, from Bangalore with the latest. So, Maya, um, what next? How soon can uh, Mr. Yadurapa take over? very soon in fact he is in right over there in fact he's just emerged from a meeting and walking out of the leader of the opposition room for the last time for quite a while now he is there he was of course absolutely triumphant he feels that they have managed to bring down a government which they have actually been trying to bring down according to the coalition for over a year now what we are expecting what deputy chief minister former Deputy Chief Minister Ara Ashok told us was that tomorrow there will be a BJP Legislature Party meeting at which they will elect the head of the Legislature Party meeting and Ara Ashok saying it would definitely be Edurapa. And once that is done, they will approach the governor and ask him for a chance to actually form the government. So it could be just a matter of a day or two. Jagdish Shetter, former Chief Minister, also telling us that it would just take a very, very little short time indeed. It's a formality really, that BJP Legislature Party meeting. Now that Kumaraswamy has already submitted his resignation, he's been asked to be, of course, in charge as caretaker Chief Minister until that is actually done. But there's been a huge buzz here at the Vidhan Sauda the day when the coalition government just found it no longer had the numbers. It was confirmed. It was in the air, of course, for a while now. But 99 to 105. The BJP only needed its 105 legislators. They didn't even need the two independents who had offered them support. And those rebel MLAs, of course, still in Mumbai. But this is the situation here. A lot of buzz here at the Vidhan Sabha, Vidhan Sauda here in Karnataka after that coalition departure. The Congress and the JDS could not pull it together, although they sounded confident until the end. They just didn't have the numbers. And we're looking now at once again a BJP government in Karnataka headed by BS Yediyurappa for the third time. All right. Well, Maya Sharma, uh, uh, at least uh, a lot of that drama is finally over. Uh, and maybe a new round begins now. So thanks very much uh, for joining us with that update there from the Karnataka Assembly. Well, uh, Sagreka Ghosh back with us, consulting editor of the Times of India. So is Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh of the BJP. Mr. KTS Tulsi, member of parliament of the Rajya Sabha and senior lawyer. Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate of the Supreme Court. And Nasir Hussain, the, who has bravely been talking on behalf of the JDS all these days, joining us uh, from Bangalore. Uh, Mr. Hussain, let me just ask you straight off. I mean, this trust vote really dragged on and on and on. Uh, but ultimately, what many expected happened. Uh, the, the government lost its numbers. Madam, uh, it was the vote of confidence which has been presented by the Honorable Chief Minister and there were several vague allegations being made by the BJP leaders and the people in the media and I think it has provided an ample opportunity for the government benches to answer all the queries. There were questions raised that... 
All right, my apologies. We've lost that line with uh, Nasser Hussain. Sagrika, let me just get your first thoughts on this. Uh, you know, this, this, this was such a painful sort of drama that we saw drag out for days and days. And, you know, what does it tell us uh, about the way things played out in Karnataka? Is this, as some believe, a win for democracy? Clearly, the BJP sees that, away, th that way or, or a loss for democracy? Big loss for democracy, Nidhi. I think instability is endemic in Karnataka. It is a three-party state. Uh, it is a party. Uh, it is a state where ideology has ceased to matter. Uh, money power, uh, the power of uh, resources is embedded in Karnataka politics. So it really remains to be seen whether any government uh, is able to be stable and deliver governance, which is a tragedy for Karnataka. Mr. Yadriyappa is going to be chief minister, but how long will Mr. Yadriyappa last? Remember, he has uh, a lot of IOUs to a lot of different people. Uh, his uh, for earlier dispensation was a mess. He had to quit uh, in his uh, midterm. He's never completed a term, actually. Even though he's a four-time chief minister, he's never completed a term. So. Uh, is he going to be able to survive? Uh, because uh, the number of people who will join his bandwagon yeah. will need a lot, will want a lot of, will have a lot of expectations. So uh, I think, you know, money power is so embedded in Karnataka now that it is a classically unstable state where democracy always will lose because there is no ideology. There is also no regional force there. You know, there is there are caste sub-national forces, but there's no regional force like there is in South, South, South that India. Isn't that a worry that, uh, you know, whatever dispensation Mr. Yadirapa heads will also be a very shaky one? Are see, we ultimately mm -hmm. heading into early elections is the point. See, I will give two instances in order to, <clears throat> in order to counter this. First of all, in the assembly election, we have got 105. And from the day one, we are claiming that they are single largest party. Now, if if there is any uh, difference uh, within BJP, then in the last Lok Sabha election, we got 25 out of 28. That itself shows that there is no problem as far as our cohesive forces or our cohesiveness is concerned. We are a regimented party. We go by the regimentation of the entire party. So it is Yadurappa, X, Y, Z, doesn't matter. The most important today, this party is headed by Mr. Narendra Modi. So the entire, the entire uh, dimension of, uh, uh, of the running the government will be number one, zero tolerance to corruption, as Mr. Modi has already declared. By Mr. Yadurappa. X, Y, Z, you anyone don't see the comes. Irony in first of all, whether you it's don't see Mr. The irony in that no, first of all, if it's Mr. Yadurappa, yeah. Yadurappa or anyone will be decided tomorrow in the meeting in the parliamentary board. But whomsoever will come henceforth, they have to do two things. Number one, zero tolerance to corruption and I'm implementation of this. He quit. Uh, so he there quit, is no instability. He quit as chief minister before on corruption charges. But so you don't see the irony in what you're saying about B.S. Yadurappa here. No, I think if if, if Mr. Yadurappa becomes chief minister, he will be he has to be he will be guided by the policies and principle of the BJP. What does that right? mean? Right, very zero tolerance to corruption. <laughs> but he quit on corruption allegation. No, no, he quitted on corruption allegation. Yes. I understand. Mm. But let Mr. Yadurappa first be announced as chief minister. Then the question I'll answer that how we'll do it. Yeah, well, I don't know if there's any doubt on who it would be. But you know, the que uh, the question here, Sanjay Hegde, then is that you had on one hand uh, uh, the BJP and the opposition trying to somehow grab power in whatever way was possible and you had the Congress JDS trying to hold on to that power uh, in whatever way was possible. That's why you saw this long drawn out struggle. What does that tell you about democracy in Karnataka? Well, it, all that it tells me is that it is not exactly democracy. This is a democracy for those who can pay for it. And the people who will ultimately pay for it are the people of Karnataka. You expect uh, all these people who went away and were magically staying in resorts, they, uh, they did not have a price. Or even the people who stayed back or came back later, that they did not extract a price. And for the next uh, uh, life of this assembly, all those people who will support the new government you think that there will, will not be a price to be paid? Uh, I, I was told some interesting figures today by a Karnataka politician. The one thing that will keep the assembly together for some time is that fear of every MLA of having uh, president's rule and, and uh, going for re-elections again. Because um, a seat in Karnataka 
uh, costs about 10 crores. That's how much it costs uh, a political operator to, uh, to, uh, to contest for an election. For 10 crores, you could possibly contest a Lok Sabha election in North India. Now, uh, uh, for, uh, for a defection or for staying on, you would obviously have to extract the price of uh, this election, the coming election, and yet you are not sure that that is the, the correct price to be negotiated. So, I, I, as was said in British Parliament a, a long time ago, all these men have a price. Only the, the question today in India is, How much? which of us is paying that price? Well, well said, Mr. Ghosh. You want to comment on that? The use of money power, the private jets, the hotel stays. First of all, let me tell you the price the BJP party has paid since we have won with 105 seats. This long time we have to wait in order to give... That is the price give, you paid, the ultimate I'm sacrifice. I'm telling you, the price the paid is by the Karnataka people that they have been suffering because uh, uh, when uh, Mr. Kumarasamy can say that I am drinking the jar of poison and Mr. D. Sip Kumar concluded that now Stop we have all, we will all die and now I am going to have an extra to pay, right? There's a concluding comments. So you can understand the Karnataka people of Karnataka was dwindling between these two. Uh, so you had no choice but to so buy their MLAs. That's why they have been deprived. The price have been paid by Karnataka people, not by BJP. So the BJP had no choice but to buy their MLAs. So BJP has no choice but to remain calm for such a long time and see how the poison could be pegged in the glass. And today the but poison is pegged in the glass and you can see what I, is the result I, I, of this. The, no, now no, what, but, is, but what is, 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 I'm asking is, counter is question, democracy, what is, was is, the role of this, Sita Ramayana? Karnate, one second, what, is Karnataka going to be remembered for the way the MLAs were uh, allegedly purchased, taken in private jets, who paid for these hotel stays, they can't afford this it. This is the right question for the MLAs who has been for the private ah, they, jets. They have all right? this money. Did they told, did they, any statement has come from those 15 MLAs? Hmm. That I have been paid this price and this price. Obviously was paid not. Why not? would they say? Okay, fine. But who's That's paying for their uh, hotel and their transport? They and can anything? only say they have been paid. There is no. Have you any proof that from the BGP account it has been paid? I'm asking you allegedly. JDS what happens says to you Goa? What happens crore? to ten person, uh, but ten uh, leaders in Goa? They themselves told that in Congress JDS, we don't. We are not supposed to in Congress. Which is now you are not. You, you see, are not. Yadriyapas PA was seen accompanying some yeah. of the MLAs to the resort. So that's a single incident, right? That we are just the a PAs, coincidence, right? It, it he was just there for a, a cup of coffee. He at told the that fine that I was in the flight and they have all came and. They fly together, but when D. Sip Kumar jet. went, when D. Sip Kumar went to have check in the hotel, he has to come out without shower because there was a serious complaint was lodged against you know, him. You're missing the point. And the point here is not that. <laughs> the point here, K. T. S. Tulsi, is that yet again, you know, democracy, what we think or we call democracy, uh, is going to be remembered by these images of these these jets, like I said, these resorts. Like I said, on one hand, you had an opposition that wanted to come to power at any cost. And on, on another hand, you had a sort of unholy alliance of two parties which wanted to stay uh, together at any cost. And neither is actually works for the people of Karnataka. In, that's, in that circumstance, frankly, wouldn't state elections be the best way out? Fresh elections. Well, actually, this is a classic case of the failure of the constitution. It's not that the defections are anything new. Defections have, have uh, uh, this scourge of uh, political parties for a long time. And that is why the anti-defection law was uh, placed in the 10th schedule of the constitution. And uh, in this case, instead of being the anti-defection law, it became the defection law. Because the right of the political party or the role of the political party which, uh, around which this entire law was woven was defanged. The, the political parties could not give a direction. So therefore, if they could not give the direction, there was, there was no way anybody could get disqualified for disobeying that, uh, for voting or abstaining, uh, for voting in a different manner or abstaining from, from voting. So this, this whole thing is... Uh, a failure of the constitution. Um, not that uh, this has not been anticipated, but when the anti-defection law becomes a defection law, 
this is what will happen and we don't know uh, how stable this government will be and uh, what will happen but uh, it's the victory of the evil forces evil forces very oh, strong words right. there from mr tulsi mr ghosh wants to react immediately obviously if <clears throat> it is a victory of evil forces then what forces who was fighting cats and dog in the election when they have hinged together just to form the power power crazy you did that with the pdp in right? jnk you were all fighting against each other then you came together no, in the jnk no in the jnk we have a, we have got a common minimum agendas and if the agenda when cannot be fulfilled we came out of the power we are not hankering in the uh, hankering for the power how was it we different you were fighting shiv sena was calling you chokidar chor hair yeah. and all that and you've tied up with shiv sena no no also. that is that is very superficial sir. i mean this uh, someone is calling chokidar chor hai and we cannot that tie is superficial, up with him but when rahul gandhi well, said it's very bad no 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 when, when rahul gandhi says he has to prove Mr Hussain Mr Hussain Yes to prove we cannot prove till now he cannot yeah. prove Shiv Sena called that's her point the point is that how Shiv Sena is our ally for 25 years please not comment on that you know lot of differences could be there with the alliance okay, Mr Hussain we are in a big we family We finally have him back Mr Hussain We are Hussain. in a big family there have been serious allegations against the rebel MLA who have been offered money by the Bharatiya Janata Party what and one Mr H Vishwanath Tara Abhi Sir, by giving a statement cannot be cannot be cannot be, cannot be uh, termed as an allegation. You're giving a statement without proof. Let him speak. Because his, his line is a bit bad. Sorry, sorry. There is a there is there is a case of hot trading. Ah, ah, the BJP leader. Sir, the allegation. Unfortunately, we can't. Sir, what happens in Goa? What happens in Goa? Your ten ten MLA is claimed to us. Why is that? We can't we can't hear what he's saying. But Sagrika, there was you a know, bigger point, Mr. Tulsi was wanted, making because. Also, what the Supreme Court has done vis-à-vis -vis the anti-defection law, this has ramifications in the future. This is not something that's just about. It Karnataka. does. What the Supreme Court has done is actually effectively not allowed a party to exercise its whip. Uh, when it said that the MLAs cannot be compelled to take part in the proceedings, uh, I think in that sense the Supreme Court did a sort of act of constitutional balancing. It said the Speaker has complete authority over the House, but at the same time, uh, the MLAs can't be compelled. But leaving that aside, uh, Nithi, and I know that that was a constitutional mess actually that we saw in Karnataka. I think the bigger political takeout for me, the more sobering and rather depressing political takeout for me, is that the BJP is now becoming. a monopolistic force across india it's gobbling up defectors everywhere uh, whether it's in goa whether it's in karnataka it's in power now in 17 states uh, the congress is really falling like nine pins now what does this mean for democracy and what does this mean for the opposition in the parliament because the pa opposition's ability to uh, debate to argue to stall the house to make its point is going to be severely restricted if its numbers keep falling in the states you know the Previous Modi government, the Rajya Sabha was the voice of the opposition, but now we're seeing even there the they're, they're poaching uh, again. Opposition Tulsi, is not working out. You know, the fact is that this again is a body blow for the Congress. At the end of the day, I mean, the party is already down; doesn't have a leader, and you know, you, you, you know, the one government it had in the south, apart from Puducherry, has just sort of collapsed under its own uh, weight. Uh, you know, what are the implications you think for the party? well um of course the uh, the party is imploding but uh, it's it's uh, also a sad day for the constitution the constitutional balance having been disturbed there was there was no way the the speaker could have enforced the law and there was no way the political parties could play the game according to the rules prescribed in the 10th schedule so it was uh, it was something which was uh, which was not not envisaged by the constitution they thought that 10th schedule was quite an answer to as an anti defection law but then it in the end it's a constitution which failed well i i i was asking more of a political question but uh, you know a quick last last word to you San sanjay hegde on this uh, i mean you're you're a keen political watcher uh, is is this what sagrika says i mean the gradual sort of decimation of the opposition one by one that has implications for democracy at a much larger scale well let's put it there is no opposition anybody who is in opposition Uh, of any kind whether in the political uh, space or uh, even in media all those voices are being either silenced 
or being bought out into silence. That is what is happening. And there is also a conscious choice being made by many people who think that uh, these people are here to stay for 5 years, 10 years, we can't fight them, we might as well join them. The uh, result, however, is that it is not going to be a Congress Mukt Bharat, but it is going to be a Congress Yukt BJP. Many years ago, a senior advocate told me the day that the Congress and the BJP finally get together, that is the end of this country. Ultimately, <laughs> that is what is happening. The Congress is being wholesale, uh, uh, congressmen are wholesale acquiring the BJP brand. It's a one-party state. It's All going right. To be a one-party well, uh, well, that uh, that uh, that terrible cliche that Nataka and Karnataka is finally over. God, please don't say that again. But thank <laughs> you uh, to all of you for joining us. Let's see what happens uh, and when Mr. Yadurappa takes over as Chief Minister. How long will that government last? Is anyone's guess? Thanks very much.